Thanks for staying with us. Now, since the outbreak of the COVID-19 pandemic, the financial market, particularly capital markets around the world, have seen levels of volatility um, that are only comparable to the global financial crisis of 20, 2007 and 2008. Now, there's been a rise in pay cuts, job loss for entrepreneurs, low patronage, and automatically this means little cash to spend. Now, while we hope for a quick end of, to this pandemic, it is important that we note that even in crisis, we can still make money. Tosi on last sign day is the founder of Money Africa, a personal finance platform that teaches people to build healthy financial habits, cut down on unnecessary expenses and generate multiple incomes of stream. She's a chartered accountant with 10 years of experience across accounting, corporate finance, auditing and taxation. Um, Temi Tokwe Obasanya is a chartered financial analyst and a personal finance expert with over a decade of work experience spanning regional financial markets across sub-Saharan Africa. She currently works as a treasurer of a leading consumer finance organization and her passion for social impact and sustainable wealth solution has seen her deliver financial literacy coaching to many individuals and small businesses, helping them to make better financial decisions. Now, remember, you can join the conversation. Tweet at us at Plus TV Africa or at Ways Show Africa One with the hashtag Ways. Send us an SMS or WhatsApp to 081 8038 Thank you for joining us, Tosi and Temi Tokwe. Thank you for having Hi. us. Hi. <laughs> Thank you for having us. All right. So, uh, now, uh, as I said earlier on, we are complete novice in this business. So I will just start from the basics. We've been seeing a lot of things happening in the global market. When you switch to any financial anal um, analytic channel, you see um, all the, the stocks going crazy, everything going crazy right now, the price of dollar crashing and all of that. So how does this affect you and I, I think I'll start with uh, Temi Tokwe, then Tosin would, you know, give her two cents. How does this affect us? Okay, um, so it's, it's quite a precarious situation um, we found ourselves in. Um, we're in the middle of a global health pandemic that is essentially pushing the global economy into synchronized recession, you know, region after region. So we've seen how very clearly the health of the people impacts financial markets and global economic system, essentially how um, human capital drives economic capital, right? So to bring this back home to Nigeria, it's something of a double whammy. Um, we've seen twin shocks, one to the already neglected um, healthcare sector and the threat to life on the back of the COVID-19 outbreak. But more importantly, the drastic crash in oil prices that is essentially threatening our revenue base as a country, right? So on the micro level, as it affects you and I, right, the truth is post-COVID-19, there will be a shift in Nigeria's socioeconomic structure. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news, um, but the truth is the inequality gap will widen. And this is quite disappointing. The poor will get poorer and the rich who already have resources, who already know how to position, to take advantage of market opportunities as they open up, they will get richer. Already, as you said, um, a lot of people have lost their jobs um, in, the, in the past few weeks. Some people have been furloughed. They've had to proceed on unpaid leave. Um, a lot of people have taken salary cuts. And I'm talking about percentages from 20% to as high as 80%. Imagine a working 80% cut in your salary. That, that's like 80 cents on the dollar. That's a lot of money, right? So that begs the question that how are these people going to survive? Already, the average working class Nigerian leads from paycheck to paycheck. And I'm talking about working class. I'm not talking about the socially disadvantaged guys that depend on daily wages, you know, to feed their family. I'm talking about the regular working class guy who by the, you know, mid-month is already calculating when is that salary going to come in. Yeah. He's already allocating the salary in advance. Do you see? So already people are losing their jobs. Um, you know, start to wonder, for the guy that didn't have an emergency fund, for the guy that didn't have cash reserves, how is he going to support his family, right? Mm -hmm. So it's going to hit us. Um, to my mind, 
we're still behind the curve. It's yet to hit us. It's still, things are going to get progressively worse. So for you and I, it's time to begin to take our personal finance planning very seriously. I've heard a lot of people say that, oh, personal finance planning is for the rich, it's for the wealthy. It's not. It's actually for everybody who wants to achieve financial independence. It's for everybody. It's for you and I who want to you know, tr make the transition from working class young people to the retiree who is able to afford the life that he wants. Okay, so, so right um, now. <laughs> all right, yeah. so let's, sorry to cut you, Tammy. So uh, I like that okay. you have sent, you have laid those foundations for us. And I'm happy that um, mm -hmm. um, um, Tosi is um, also here. Um, Tosi, in your own opinion of the, um, the global meltdown, I would call it, that is happening, um, what would you think that I should begin to know right now? financially okay. all right so thank you for having me i think where we always want to start from is we want to talk about what is actually happening in the market and we've been hearing about how there's a drop in the oil prices amongst other things so we always tell people there are two things you do not completely outsource you do not completely outsource your finances and you do not completely outsource your health so everybody has a right to be able to understand how the market is currently working and how they can position for it. So before we go into the numbers, I just want to say, um, what is a recession? A recession basically means when there's two consecutive quarters of a drop in the numbers, right? And it's guess what? While it's going to be a poor thing, knowing that um, a lot of people are going to suffer from the impacts, there's another bright side to it. A recession is an opportunity for money to change hands. So money is changing hands. The question is, how do you position? How do I get to benefit from this? How do I sit on the right hand of the curve? And it's not possible for you to sit on the right hand of the curve. Number one, you have a negative mindset. I know they say, oh, it's motivational speaking, but no, it's not. You need to actually have a very positive outlook. You need to tell yourself that, listen, we're going to get through this. We're, how do we position? How do we fight through? How do we get past this? So your mindset is very, very critical. Um, I mean, we're young people. We've never seen a pandemic before. I know that it happened. The last one was about 80-something years ago. None of us has ever lived through this before. So we're talking based on what we think might happen. We're talking about theories. So number one is for us to get out of this alive, get out of this insanity. So do everything to protect your mindset. Do everything to protect your, to make sure that you are sound. Sorry about that. No. Um, so, go ahead, go ahead. <laughs> and so once we've done... Yeah, so once we've done that, then the next thing is to put pen to paper. What is the plan? There's something we call a magic number. A magic number means how much am I able to get by every month? And that number would differ from people to people. So for instance, A might have a family that are dependent on them. They have children. They have to, you know, the mouth is, they have more mouths to feed. While another person might have a little magic number. So find that magic number. What do I need to survive? How much will cover food? How much will cover putting my lights on? How much will cover me to survive till the next month? At this Once point. Once you find that number, yeah. then you start asking yourself, how much runway do I have? Do I have two months? Do I have three months? Do I have four months? So that's a good place to start. Awesome. Awesome. Okay, well, um, I was listening to um, Temi Toppe speak earlier, and now listening to you, Tulsing, uh, one of the things you highlighted, uh, um, Temi highlighted that uh, the, obviously what we, the outcome will be that the poor will get poorer and the rich will get richer. And now, Tulsing, you're saying that money is shifting hands. So um, for the average Nigerian, this can be a bit confusing. So I would like to um, either one of you specify um, <laughs> what, what exactly is going on Yes. Okay, so to just um, shed more light on that, um, just what Tosin was trying to say is, again, as far as recessions and depressions go, right, it's not the end of the world. It's not the time to panic. They are a part of our normal economic cycles. They happen. You know, we ride the market. The market goes down. We come back up and everything. So, yes, it might be something of a negative thing. But sometimes an economic crisis is actually one of the best times for you to invest. Because that way, if you're properly positioned, if you have money, then you can pick up significant you know, assets at a discount. Do you see? So, and I like where Tosin was coming from. Again, the starting position is planning. Right now, it's time for you to plan, to say, okay, look, let me be serious about my financing and say how much comes in, how much income do I have and how much do I spend monthly? Then what do I have left for savings and investments? 
do you see? And that expenditure number is something you have to look at very critically because in the coming months, it's not the time for luxuries. It's the time to just face the essentials. Buy food, buy what's essential because, again, you don't know what's going to happen. And then everybody needs an emergency fund. You need that money that would take care of your living expenses for, say, three to six months. You know, you want to start to have an accretion somewhere. And this is not money you put in the stock market that, you know, can... Um, experience a down market or something this is money that you must have liquid accessible when you need it and then the rest of your financing has to go into investing remember i talked about how you have to start from now to start to find seek financial independence and then you start to seek how to build sustainable wealth right so you need to start to invest but then when you're investing what are you looking at so I guess that's what she was trying to say, to say, look, money is going to shift and some people are losing money right now. You know, a lot of the retail outlets who have brick and mortar businesses are losing money. And the guys that are in tech, the guys that are handling data, those guys are in money. So it just depends on what side of the divide you are. Right. It depends on how much money you have to take position when the time is right. Okay. Okay. I, so, uh, okay. I, I like the angle, um, Temito, where you, you, you've, you've uh, come from. Um, you are trying to see, okay, for those people that have at least something to invest. Let me go back to Tosin. I do not have Shishi right now. You know, because you, because I hear Tosin saying that you must first of all look at how to, the, the barest minimum in terms of financing, the, your, your, the least um, um, so, um, amount that you need to survive at mm -hmm. this time. There are people right now watching the show. They don't even know how they would live by next month. So what should they be looking at? What can they do, you know, to make money Fantastic. at this time? Fantastic. So what I'm hearing you tell me is, I don't have money. How do I make money? Absolutely. So there are two things to look at. <laughs> so there are two things we look at. We look at the tangible thing and we look at the intangible asset. So the tangible asset is number one. How can I declutter? So many people are having things that they actually do not need. So they probably bought that when times were better. Can you let go of it? Can you turn it into cash? So that is one of the things to look at. Decluttering. Look at. Look through. What don't I need? How can I turn it into money? Now, the next thing you're looking for how to sell is intangible assets. Because what we're working with now is we need to use what we have to get what we need. What are your intangible assets? What skills do you currently have? What knowledge do you currently have? Now, we can see that a lot of businesses in Nigeria that were offline, that is brick and mortar companies, they are transitioning online. Can you help them with that transition? So many business people out there, fantastic businessmen, fantastic businesswomen, but their online skill is very, very weak. How can you create a package to be able to help them do that transitioning? Now, a lot of parents have their children at home, the schools are closed, who can teach piano online? Who can teach finance? We just launched a product, the Financial Literacy for Kids product, which we might have not launched if this had not happened. So the truth is there's so many opportunities out there. We just need to be asking ourselves questions. Now, for a lot of families as well, they're tired of eating their own food. I am tired of tasting my food. So if I can find a nicely cooked homemade meal that will come to my doorstep, I'm very happy to jump at it. So basically now, it's like a numbers game. You're throwing that at it. What will work? What will not work? So this is the time to go back and like literally join up things, asking yourself, what is the demand? What are people asking for? So we can see that the online education demand is quite high. So people are learning skills. They want to be visible on LinkedIn. They want to know how to use Facebook ads, all those kind of things. How can I teach it? Or we're also thinking about how can I create solutions? Also, the delivery services. They were doing pretty well before the whole um, COVID, so but now, now just oh, upscaled. Like Amazon. Yeah. Like, yeah. Oh. Okay, so, so you know what, Tosi, we would have to take a short break because I have a, I have a small right. issue with that training online because it's everywhere right now. No problem. So we're going to take a short <laughs> break. We still have Tosi right. and Temi Tokwe with us. Please stay with us. We'll be right back.